Uh, it says for mandatory national service. Uh, Defense Department announces civilian expeditionary workforce uh, in Pentagon Directive 1404.10. It says, management retains the authority to direct and assign civilian employees either voluntarily or involuntarily or on an unexpected basis to accomplish DOD mission. So, see, they're saying they're going to create a 7 million man. That was in the New York Times. The Congress said, I kept saying a million because Obama said as big as our army, as, as big as the military. That would be a million people. They say 7 million now and that they're going to draft you into this and they'll decide. No more draft boards if you stay here or if you go overseas. And uh, it's 1404.10. Just Google, Defense Department announces civilian expeditionary workforce uh, or uh, directive, DOD. And it goes on. Uh, it is uh, Section 4, Subsection E, Paragraph 2. So if you go to 1404.10, you go to Section 4, Subsection E, Paragraph 2. There you go again. I mean, on screen. Zoom in on this for me, guys. I mean, you can go right there to the subsection if you want to go read it for yourself. You know, we, we, this is from Infowars.net. You can click through. That's a hyperlink right there. You'll be at the Pentagon website. I mean, you'll be there for yourself to direct and assign civilian employees either voluntarily or involuntarily on an unexpected basis to accomplish the DOD mission. There's the headline. The Defense Department announces civilian expeditionary workforce. I mean, you can go read that if you like. You can read the you can read the civilian inmate labor camp program document, Army Regulation 210-35. I mean, come on, don't be lazy. Google it right now. You'll be at Army.mil. See, they won't control the borders, but they're going to control you, the milk cows. Throughout history, criminals get control of governments. They use phony crises to enslave the public. And they're taking your pension funds, they're taking your money, they're raising the taxes on you, they are going to squeeze the daylights out of us all, and that's why they're geared up for martial law and to take the media over, because this is quite a gamble by the establishment. You know, we should have grand juries indicting the bankers and having them turn states' evidence against each other, and this whole criminal shadow government, national security state, should be exposed. Instead, it's acting all legitimate, and it's going to manage the financial crisis, and it's going to manage everything it's engineered and bring in total tyranny and start arresting people for their speech. So it either goes into tyranny or into liberty. And believe me, folks, liberty is probably where it's going because this tyranny is so horrible. They've got planned, you know, nine times out of ten, lunatic t tyrants try to take over and fail. It's just that another tyrant comes and another tyrant comes. So in the end, they always win. Every nation falls to tyranny. No nation's ever survived as long as the United States. Rome fell in about 230 years. We're 236 years old right now, folks. We're due to fall. And frankly, we've already fallen. Can we get it back? You know, the globalists have grabbed the republic in their jaws. Can we grab it back? Or will we let the bulldog of the New World Order convince us that it's his to eat? You know, that he can go ahead and gobble it all down into his greedy belly. So that's when I say to all of you, this is history. It's happening. They're openly announcing Bank of the World, world government. They're openly announcing that we'll pay our taxes to a new Bank of the World and, and that it's a world government and global governance. Google global governance in, in Google News. Hundreds of mainstream articles saying global governance, global governance. Governance means government. It's everywhere. New global currency. It's all happening by the very criminals that have engineered this. And if they can get the sleight of hand done, if they can get the hidden in plain view completed, if they can engage in this heist, that they win and get a world empire, the first ever. But if we say, wait a minute, what you're doing is criminal, what you're doing is illegal, what you're doing is out of control, they fall, they fail. We get our country back. But if they can play the police and military and the public off against each other, if they can get a shooting war started, if they can convince the cops to go for the guns, it's going to be a total implosion of our society, and then they win. We want to stop that and stop that now. And that's why it's important to expose the military takeover, the FEMA camps, the mass graves, all of it, because this agenda, this Internet media takeover, Barack Obama taking over the web, <clears throat> this is all happening, and it's bipartisan. Uh, he's Representative uh, John Shaw just joins us for a few minutes, Representative from Tennessee, District 80. Sir, thank you for coming on with us. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you for having me, Alex. You bet. Now, we played the clip earlier of you on a local news station talking about Army checkpoints, 
Uh, mm -hmm. The governor found out, thanks to you and others, and canceled it. Can you just, in a nutshell, tell us exactly, uh, uh, specifically, what was going on? Uh, yes, I can. First of all, I, you know, I have got a check now. I don't have concrete facts, but I don't think the military has, first of all, any jurisdiction to be checking seatbelts. When you look at the fact of a military unit being out, uh, your, your daughter, my wife, or someone driving through a roadblock with all of these local officials, the Army and everybody out there, I think it's just going to scare people to death. I think our local and state officials have the staff when needed to check seat belts, uh, to do a seat belt check without the Army getting involved. And uh, I just don't think it's a good idea. Well, obviously, sir, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but yes, it still violates posse comitatus. They haven't completely removed that 1878 <clears throat> law. We know in Mexico and communist China, they have troops on the streets. This is a sign of a banana republic of a third world uh, police state. So that mm -hmm. we don't want that. Uh, but the larger issue here is that they've announced Homeland Security wants to put 20,000 regular army troops to, to patrol America, the Naval War College, the Army War College has said their new job will be engaging us, uh, combat with the American people to stop an insurrection against the banks. Uh, so, A, are you aware of that? B, can you tell us specifically what units, how we, uh, why the Army was going to be out running checkpoints? Well, and, and I'm not aware of that. And let me just tell you, I found this out late on Friday evening myself when some calls starting started to come into my local office. I am in the Nashville at State Capitol Monday through Thursday, so give or take noon, two-ish, three o'clock in the afternoon time, but I'm in my district on Fridays. Well, I got this news late on Friday, and when I got the news, I immediately jumped on it to try to call some local authorities that I knew first to see what was going on. And when I made the call, I had found out, or I found out at that point in time, that the governor had already made the decision to cancel this, in which I was very proud of that. But I am not aware of Homeland Security doing this. I, I did hear that they would be involved in this roadblock issue on last Friday, but I am not aware of the other part of, of the question that you ask. Okay, specifically, though, when you talk to the local authorities, wh whose idea, where did it come from that regular army is going to be out running checkpoints? I mean, a checkpoint is unconstitutional if you don't have warrants and it's random for the police to do. The, now the army? I mean, again, sir, this is suddenly happening everywhere. This is part of a larger plan. So we as detectives are asking you, uh, specific, you know, any other little tidbits you've got about who was behind this? Well, and, and, and I don't know, Alex. I can't answer that question other than the fact that it was going to take place in a little area of my district uh, in a town called Whiteville, Tennessee, which would lead me to believe or to assume that the chief of police there was the one who uh, orchestrated this idea. Now, uh, to say that is a fact, I don't know, because I have not spoken to him. Uh, directly. I've spoken to some other officials. Uh, was the state involved? Because we're almost out of time, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Was the state involved? Uh, not to my knowledge at all. Okay, so the governor had to say no. So this is what we always see. The Army then probably approached some locals as part of their covert acclamation program. And uh, State Representative uh, Johnny Shaw, we appreciate you uh, speaking out against this. We appreciate the governor saying no to this. Can you, just in closing, speak to why you were concerned about it and against it? Well, again, I was concerned because I think in this in this economic climate or in this climate that we are in with all of the terrorist attacks, et cetera, so forth and so on, can you imagine your wife, your daughter, my wife or daughter, even son driving up to a checkpoint with Homeland Security, the military police, the state police, if they were involved, and then, of course, all of your local authorities, it's going to make someone think something bad has happened in the community. And I just don't think this is a good idea. I think it's a, it would have been a scare tactic that would have been hard for some of our citizens to get over, or maybe some of our senior citizens. And I'm totally against this kind of a tactic, and I'm going to do my best as a state representative to see that this does not happen again in my district and hopefully nowhere in the state of Tennessee. Okay, Mr. Shaw, Representative Shaw, thank you for the time. Thank you for having me. Take care.